The stream and video is proudly brought to you by whatiszs.com. Uh, please note, whatiszs.com website has been taken down due to the fact that we have had to put off the launch and we currently are skint, i.e. broke, due to what is going on because we have put our all our finances into survival mode okay the time for everything to happen is now and zs plastics hint has currently put the release of the ZS on hold until after the corona virus pandemic. We must do certain things to ensure that our product is ready, ready to go fully before that no one packing the ZS is sick that is our main major concern throughout this video i will be addressing every business in the world i will be addressing every man woman and child on the face of this planet i'm warning parents i may swear throughout this video but as the owner of zs plastics hint We know that this message must come out and we proudly support it. This video will be addressing a release of a video and stream tomorrow evening that must be done to save the world from this. I, from this day forth until the coronavirus is over, I, Anthony James Avery, declare war on the coronavirus. We must stop it and we must look at this as if it is a war. We are fighting most probably the smallest enemy that mankind has ever seen. We need to stop this virus we need to look at this as if it was a war. We have a chance to pincer move this virus and our governments aren't doing anything about it. I know that the Australian Labor Liberal Party, sorry, the Australian Labor Party should get ready to take power because trust me, if they don't get out, if I don't get them out during the crisis, I certainly will be making sure they are removed from government right after the crisis. That is my promise. So get ready, Australian Labor Party. You've got to remember, I'm the guy that lobbied all of you to remove Rudd. I will remove Scott Morrison. He is the most useless Prime Minister, far worse than Kevin Rudd. But I'm not just after his head. I'm after the whole Liberal Party government. They do not deserve to be in power. The Liberal Party should be removed. And I'd say there's going to be a few government changes around the world after this. Because of the simple fact that none of them have acted. Do you want to know something? Today I actually saw a government act properly. But unfortunately they're making too many mistakes at doing this. They haven't thought it through before they did it. You just don't lock down. You just don't lock down straight away. Right? Everybody needs to be fed. You have to make sure that everybody is in accommodation. Because a lockdown will only work if those people know that they are going to be safe during the 40 day lockdown and it will need to be 40 days it can't be anything less we must kill every stage of the virus 
we must stop it in its track so that we can identify it and just take that curve and not just flatten it we're gonna stamp it out and like I tell everybody yes that I am the smartest man on the planet at the moment why am I the smartest man on the planet because I'm the only one willing to fight the governments to make sure that this lockdown happens this lockdown will work we will isolate every known case of the viral and, and unknown case of the virus. See, they're taking half ass measures to the time period that I have set. Right? The reason why I set that time, and I set that time for a reason, because the virus can live was before the mean time of the virus was eight. Now it's eight and a half days. So the virus can now live on a surface for 17 days. They have taken viable live samples of the virus off surfaces 17 days after contamination. So we've lost one of the buffer days that I originally put in my plan. This is the reason I put 10 buffer days in just in case. You can't just take a plan and then say, okay, well, we'll use this bit of the plan and use that bit of the plan. The reason why the A plan will work is because it has been manipulated. God, I can never ever say that word. I hate that word. It has been planned to the T. I have sat down. I have worked all these little things out. Now, Mr. Morrison, I do give you credence for actually finally... <laughs> finally quarantine the mail. Yeah, I actually find these things out. See, I've been warning posties every single day. Every time I saw a postie, I'd wind my window down and say, hey, mate, be careful of anything coming out of China. The virus can live on it for 16 days. And I've done it every single day. Then I finally got told this morning, uh, and I, it's, uh, it's strange, it was uh, one of the posties that I'd seen um, throughout the thing. I think it was the third postie that I saw and um, because I had to go out and get um, because my my TV blew up and I need communication I need to see what's going on so I had to go and spend uh, vital funds that I actually had saved for the release um, to actually make sure that I can see what's going on because unfortunately um, my computer screen is my TV I need a 4k TV so that I can actually read due to vision problems because a lot of times I can never find my glasses, so I need a large TV so that I can see what is actually happening. Now, when you take someone's plan and then you chop it up without thinking and adding the figures and working everything out and why these were done, you destroy a plan and then you just half ass it because that's what you did today. Now, when you quarantined the mail today, you did not quarantine it for long enough. The virus can live for 17 days on the surface. Not 14 days, 17 days. It's now been proven. So that means the mean life of the virus is eight and a half days when it's most contagious but it still can be contagious at that 17th day. If it's viable and it's alive, it can spread. So shutting the mail down, stop, sorry, stopping the mail for 14 days is a useless step. You need to turn around and quarantine the mail for minimum 20, well, seeing that that extra day has been taken, we now need to quarantine the mail for 21 days to give us a buffer. So 17 out of 21, that leaves us four extra days, right? And we can adjust that quarantine period if we have to, right? Because remember, the plan has a 10-day buffer. And I'm talking to every government. I'm not just talking to Scott Morrison in regard to this. You need to quarantine your mail for 21 days. Anything in or out, sorry, out, you shouldn't be sending it if your country is infected. 
right? You should quarantine it at the port before you send it, and then it should be quarantined at the other end, just in case someone on board has the virus. So you, you're going to need to quarantine at both ends. Shipments, people are going to slow down. Forget about the luxuries. Luxuries, this is worse than the Great Depression. I'm sorry, but it is. This is worse than the Great Depression. In the Great Depression, they didn't have luxuries. They skimped and saved. They rationed their food so skimply and so intensely. They made sure that everybody was fed. They made sure everybody had something to eat. Right, you can make a loaf of bread. In government, make sure there's plenty of flour double the flour deliveries to the stores it's really important so that we can make bread throughout these 40 days it's really easy to make a loaf of bread it's extremely easy to make a loaf of bread what we have to do is get ready i've been saying get ready get ready get ready get ready for a reason because it's going to happen, because by July 1st, 60% of the world's population is going to be infected if we don't act soon. But the problem is, Mr. Morrison and every single world leader out there, including the Queen, listen to my words. Forget about the money. And I'm telling every employer, forget about the money. I'm talking to all the people, forget about the money. The only important thing through the 40 days is that we have been given ample food supplies to make sure that we can go through the 40 days and 40 nights. Because without 40 days and 40 nights, we cannot stop this virus. This virus is deadly. This virus can kill. This virus could take out our whole population if it mutates. If this virus mutates, it could take out the rest of our, us. It's already mutated into this version. I think with a little help from somebody in a lab. But it's mutated. This is the SARS virus. For those of you that don't know, this is SARS. This is a new mutated version of SARS. Far more deadly. We are reaching proportions of destruction to the human race that we have never seen before. And by July 1st, we will see that happen. It will be worse than the Spanish flu. It will be worse than the plague. By July 1st, and trust me, there are medical experts out there speaking up. The government's own medical people are starting to speak up. See, I think every single medical practitioner out there that has heard my words knows that this will work. It's easy. All we have to do is think we're a hospital. And for 40 days and for 40 nights, every single man, woman, child on the face of earth will be a doctor, will be a nurse, will be a visual aid to make sure we will security we will be everything for 40 days and for 40 nights we don't need money through this time right anything through the post right don't think about getting online and anything like that and think you're going to get something in four days it's not going to happen you'd be stupid if you get something through the post at the moment i'm really sorry but you would be a rucker a fool you would be an idiot a moron. I don't know what other languages you call them, but everybody knows what a fool is. The whole thing is, mankind has the ability to stop this virus in its tracks. It truly does, folks. We truly have 
the ability to stop this virus. We can make it work. We, the people, can make this work. And if we don't, we're up Shit's Creek. Okay, what's Ship's Creek? Not sh Ship's Creek, Shit's Creek. As in shit. What the fuck is happening? And it's bad, folks. It truly, truly is bad. This is the most probably the worst thing that has ever happened to humankind. And we have doctors out there agreeing with the government idiots. Sorry, and I call them idiots. And we have idiot governments in power at the moment who have not got the clue, have not sort of started talking to everybody. They're starting acting on their own. Yes, you need to start taking precautions. Do it slowly and sensible not to panic your population. You will make it worse if you make them run around like loopies, like unfortunately India has done. I think that's how you say it in India. Loopies or something. It might, I might be wrong. Correct me if I am. Now, if we don't do this, folks, we could all die. And this is no word of a lie. Your children, your daughter, Mr. Morrison, your daughters could be affected. And you know now it is infecting people. You now have to start taking more serious steps than you have done. And trust me, Mr. Morrison, after this is all over, I will see you out of power. But start acting like a prime minister so you don't go out looking like a rucker, a fool. Because I guarantee you the way you are acting at the moment, Mr. Morrison, you are a fool. And trust me, we can tell when you're, when you're lying. You've tried to cover it up today, but I picked your new one. You've got a new tell. You can't hide it, Mr. Morrison. That's what it tells. That's what tells are. That's why poker players win money. And trust me, I've won many, many tournaments. I can pick tells. That's why I'm good at what I do. And one thing I can see, Mr. Morrison, and sorry, guys, I actually can't read the chat due to that vision problem that I'm telling you all about because I haven't actually set that TV up yet. I'm working off a tiny little monitor, a tiny, tiny little monitor. And, uh, yeah, it's not really working that well. Even at, um, I think I'm at 250% and I can barely just read what you've written. I do apologise, folks. And, um, but if we don't act now, and we don't act soon, we're going to lose 60% of our population. We truly will. So this evening, I'm asking everybody out there that watches this video or watches this stream, tell everybody to go to my channel and click on the link for the up and coming stream that will be advertised for tomorrow night. And listen to the plan in great detail. Every man, woman and child needs to listen to this. During that one, I'll try not to swear. I really will, folks, but it might pop out, unfortunately. Yeah, I swear too much. I do know that. I'm a Christian and I know that. My pastor, my pastor calls me the pubbies man. I speak pubbies, he calls it. You go to China, you speak Chinese. You go to Japan, you speak Japanese. I, I, I have worked in the pubs and the clubs industry for so long, and I've always been a Christian, but you're around people that swear quite a lot. So my, my pastor looks at it this way. He knows that I talk about God no matter where I am, and I put the word of God out there. Yeah, I'm a Christian. But it's got nothing to do with the 40 days, 40 nights, folks. The 40 days and 40 nights is because that's what it should be. 40 days, 40 nights. In the plan, I added 10 day buffer period, right? Because originally it was 16 days for the total life of the virus on a surface. 14 days for the gestation in anybody. And if we do not do something about it fast. We will all die. And it will happen. Trust me, I still don't know if my mother's death was because of the coronavirus. 
All I know is she died well over a week ago. We didn't get told about it until the early hours of the morning, about, I think, most probably about two hours after she died. They were covering something up. I, I think they knew she had the virus because on that night, two people in her section died. Two people died. Not just my mum, someone else lost their mum because there's only ladies in mum, that section. And I know it was one of the, the people from that area. I've actually um, remembered the name of the lady that passed because when I rang up, they asked me, who am I ringing up about? Which dead person was I ringing? Pretty much, they were the words, not the exact words, it was a lot more polite than that. Was it this person or was it that person? You know, they made a made that person made a major screw up, or I think that person was actually trying to let us know that something major had happened through the night. But we don't know. I get to I get to see my mum off, and my dad has actually let me because we can only have X amount. We can only have ten people at mum's funeral. So, and I've asked my dad, I've through my sister, if I could film the funeral so that we can actually make sure. Everybody in the family can see Mum's funeral. And yeah, it's bad. You can't have more than 10 people at your funeral. Seriously, my mum would have packed an oval. Everybody that ever met my mum was her best friend. The moment they met mum, they were her best friend. She had so many friends. She had so many friends. It devastated a lot of people, a lot of nurses that went back on shift the next day and found out mum was dead. Devastated, devastated the home care people that used to look after mum. It's devastated my whole family. We couldn't get the body for, well, I think it was over 10 days. I.e. we can't see mum until the day of the funeral. So in other words, long enough for the virus to die because the virus can only live on a human for X amount of time. But I'd say they were waiting for her blood tests. And I can't find out because my sister hasn't even been told she's power of attorney, so I can't just ring up and ask. I've got to go through my sister. And my sister will tell me that when we find out, but she doesn't know. She's just passing it off as old age. But I think logically, two people, same or something scary happened that night. But as governments and the people of Earth, we need to really do something about it because I don't want you suffering what I am suffering. I really don't. It hurts. It hurts a lot. So I'm strongly asking all of you to please, please tell all your friends Share this video as much as you can to wait for tomorrow's advertised stream on the Cannabis Protester website or on these channels. I don't know how to set up a time on like Twitch and DLive yet. So unfortunately, yeah. If the first stream does not work, unfortunately there is problems with the stream times. But I won't be streaming at any time. I'll be streaming at midnight. Midnight tomorrow night. It's not midnight for many of you at that time. But you will be told by your YouTube channel how long it will be before I do the stream. I'm going to lay this plan out in such a detail that everybody on the face of the earth will be screaming to their governments, we need to shut down for 40 days and 40 nights to find the virus. It is real easy, folks. It is real easy. See, I have had to put my life at risk to make sure that I am prepared. See, one thing I didn't have was enough dog food. Um, let's just say I spent $400 on dog food yesterday. I went everywhere. 
I could only buy X amount of dog food in each store. And I didn't overburden each store, I only just grabbed enough. And I still don't have enough for my dogs, Mr Morrison. I still don't have enough and it's cost me 400 bucks for food. I've got eight dogs and I've got to call the pups dogs now because they eat like dogs. They're 16 months old. 16, sorry, 16 weeks old. 16 weeks old. Sorry, almost 17 weeks. They're good dogs. Well trained dogs, they're trained watchdogs now. So if you need if you're in the Newcastle area and you need a good dog, look look them up on Gumtree, they're called Calamays. Because next week, if I'm still feeding them next week, the price is going up. Because unfortunately I've spent a great deal of money on these dogs. To feed these dogs, I feed them very well, very well, especially pups that are growing. They need to be fed well. And I had to throw that one in everybody because I am selling pups. It's you know, a good way to sell pups. I know how to talk to people. I know how to advertise. And I'm not going to rest until I win the war against the coronavirus because I do know that this plan will work. The logistics of the plan will work. And at midnight, my time, tomorrow night, I will, and that's Australian Eastern Standard Time, midnight tomorrow. I will be laying this plan out in full detail on why we must shut down Earth. Because we really truly need to do it. Those of you out there that don't think this is real, you're a rucker, you're a fool to those governments that are rushing out and just shutting down, bang, big mistake, major mistake. What have I been saying? Get ready, get ready, get ready. Plan it. It does still have to be planned. You've got to make sure that they can be isolated before you lock them down. You can't lock down a country, you can't lock down the world until you make sure that every homeless person, every migrant, everybody that is currently on the street has accommodation. There are ample empty buildings out there in every country, especially at the moment. Not talking about businesses. Out in the empty buildings, make sure they are viably sound. You're going to need guards. Set up segregated areas. Put your homeless so that they are segregated. Don't put them close enough so that their germs can travel if they've got the coronavirus. You have to do this in every country. It is going to be a logistical nightmare because we have homeless. This is where the problem is. But See, Australia came up with a solution. That wasn't my idea, that was somebody's idea, somebody else's idea to put them in hotels. We need to put everybody, every tourist needs to be accommodated. Every homeless needs to be accommodated. Everybody returning needs to have done to your country the same as what Australia is doing. That was actually a really good idea. That is a good idea. They've done something right. And that's probably why I've held off sending the letter. But Mr Morrison, I will see this government removed. Because you are not worthy to lead a party, sir. You have shown us that in a time of crisis, you are the most useless man on this planet. And some other world leaders fit that criteria bill as well. And I'm sorry, Tina, I can barely read what you are saying. I, I cannot see the board, darling. I, can, I suppose, hang on, let me try and enlarge it up once more. Just do one more large. Sorry, folks. Um, I'm having trouble reading the chat due to my vision problem, especially without my glasses. There we go. All right, now what I'm doing, I'm actually putting it over onto the screen so everybody can see the screen. I just have to add an image to the picture so everybody's got something to look at to remind them of what it is so that um, everybody knows that this needs to be stopped. Everybody knows 
that we need to kill this virus, but to kill it and stop it. We've got to find it. We must find, I can read it now, Thank you. it's no problem, Tina. We must find the virus. It must be found to be treated. This is not a crackdown by the government. This is going to need martial law, and this is being called by one of the most unlikely people in the world, one man that believes martial law should never ever be enacted unless it's really needed. This is the time it's needed. We have to have jackboots on every single country. The Army, the Navy, the Air Force, must act together. The Air Force are going to have to act as supply lines for our people. They are going to have to sequester aircraft, trucks, drivers. You are going to have to isolate those people from everybody else. They, with truck drivers. Truck drivers at the moment should not be touching their load. They should have somebody in there doing the load on the unpack. The truck driver should not touch a pallet. If he touches a pallet, he should clean that area because most pallets are wrapped these days in plastic. He should have a cleaning cloth with some sanitizer so that anywhere he touches with his hand, in other words, he should be wearing gloves of some description. Taxi drivers. Sorry, I think we should turn taxi drivers off. We See, the problem is when the 40 days and 40 nights happen, it must happen as a thing, because if they're doing this to get rid of the population, I'll tell you when to lock down, because we need to survive. And if these idiots won't assist us, we will have to do it ourselves. And then after it's over, we remove everyone that didn't act. Because if our governments don't act and shut the world down, those governments should be removed from power because they don't have the legal right after this to serve as politicians because they have proved in a time of crisis they have ha acted stupidly, half-assed, like fools and lied their way through it and most of them are lying. They're trying to let you think it's not as bad as what it is. It's bad, folks. This is fucking bad. Trust me, whenever something happens... See, I'm normally reporting that it's a false flag. Did you ever think about that? A man that reports most things as false flags, which are false flags, by the way, is now actually backing up the governments. Why? Because my mum's dead. And I know, actually, I do know of one other death, not my family, but someone else's family. They passed away, actually, in the very first lot of nursing home people. A friend of mine lost his mum. Down in Sydney, unfortunately. Sorry, mate. I, you know I'm sorry. I don't. Your mum was great. But if we don't act, and we don't act soon, folks, it's going, you're all going to experience what I'm feeling. We have to do this. So I'm urging everybody to tell their friends at midnight tomorrow night, which is, oh, actually, no, midnight tonight, sorry, midnight tonight. And it won't be an April Fool's joke. It is, this is not an April Fool's joke. I am not that sort of person. That's what everybody knows me. I don't pull April Fool's jokes. This is too serious to talk about it. All I'm doing is laying out the plan. That's it. I'm just laying out the plan, what we must do. And if everybody's worried that it's an April Fool's joke, we'll make it the next night. Make it midnight. April, I'll redo the broadcast on the end of April Fool's. Why? Because it needs to be said. You need to know why this plan needs to be enacted. That part is easy. Why? Because I don't want to see your families die. 
I don't want one other person to die. See, the, the governments, you listen to the way they talk. They talk about the death rate as if, oh, well, they don't give a shit. It's not them. They really do. Listen to their words. They don't fucking care. We are just numbers to them. We are numbers to them. Oh, okay, Tina, if you're stuck with pups, even, even if they're pugs, you can teach them to be watchdogs. Get, stick them with mum and dad when they're outside. Let mum and dad teach them to be a watchdog. That's who will really teach them to be a watchdog is mum and dad. That's what I do when I'm stuck with pups. I turn them into watchdogs and actually get more money for them down the road because they've, they're trained, they're watchdogs. They're actually better than mum and dad. They alert me straight away. When someone's out there, I know. So do that, Tina. It'll work. Sorry, folks, I am interacting with chat. And as soon as I get this uh, image up, I've just lost my mouth, uh, mouse. As soon as I can get this image up, I can get the chat up. And um, so once we sort this out, folks, then we can go back to our normal lives. But yes, we are actually going to have to rebuild our food production lines. See, everybody's worried about stimulus package, stimulus package, stimulus package. Yeah, we need a stimulus package because we need to buy fucking food for 40 days. And if you spend your stimulus package on anything else, you're a fucking idiot. Buy 40 days worth of food. Yes, there's limits. Okay, the, food, the, the limits on food are the greens. Yes. Go and buy two tins from this store, go to um, another store, buy two tins, because some other stores don't have that on green. Well, Coles don't have it on greens. You can go and buy greens. They've only got, um, Coles have got it on tomatoes. Um, but the thing is, you all, every man, woman and child, has to start acting like this is serious. You cannot keep on saying it's not real. It's fucking real, folks. I'm not telling you what I'm going out and buying tomorrow. People are most probably going to laugh at me when I'm walking down the street. But I can't afford to even go to the doctors without what I'm buying tomorrow. I'm picking it up tomorrow. But we need to plan for it. And I'm talking to the governments now. We need to plan for it, and it still needs to be done. Mr. Morrison, 21 days quarantine. 21 days. On everything. What You've got to think about this, Mr. Morrison. What if someone on the plane or the handlers had the virus? It needs to be quarantined for 21 days. And I'm talking about our own people. Before it moves on, Mr. Morrison, it must be quarantined for 20, 21 days. No less. No less. We've got to add that extra day now. Originally, I said 20. But now it's got to be quarantined for 21 days because we've lost one of our buffer days. Those buffer days are there for this reason. They're in the plan for this reason, Mr. Morrison. And yes, Mr. Morrison... Today, I'm actually going to give you a list, link to one of my other channels. Maybe I'll give you a link to all my channels. It's too, it takes too much to click through them. Though. I'll give you a link to one of the ones that's actually got quite a lot of subscribers. So you think I've only got eight subscribers on the Cannabis Project. Yeah, on the Cannabis Protester, yeah. It's only been going for a few short weeks. So yeah, it's only got eight subscribers. But my main channel, Mr. Mr. Morrison, has got 17,000. And combined, I've got 41,000 over all my channels. 41,000 subscribers. And they're not all the same subscribers. Some of the people from my main channel don't know about some of my channels because they're about totally different subjects. And so what I do is I've spread all my videos over different things. But at the moment, Mr. Morrison, all my subscribers are seeing the same video. And a lot of my subscribers, Mr. Morrison, a fair percentage of them are Australians. You need to start acting properly, Mr. Morrison. Stop lying. We can tell when you lie. And you need to tell it's even better than the last. 
And I know you're watching my videos, Mr. Morrison, because I'm sending them to you. And you've already most probably said, like, you go to that channel and look at them and say, yeah, okay, yeah, he's talking about me again. Because I am Mr. Morrison. I plan to remove you from government. And I will use every legal means that I can. The Queen and the Attorney General. And I guarantee you, you won't see power again, Mr. Morrison, because all your party knows that I'm after your head. All your party knows that I'm the man that lobbied the Labor Party to remove Kevin 07. You, sir, may have killed people because of your inactions. And I'm now this one's to all the world leaders. You may have killed people. And I believe that if you don't start acting now as a world government and as a UN and lock the world down for 40 days and for 40 nights, I will insist on Hague trials for every political leader that has let people die because they see us only as statistics. And trust me, folks, you watch how they talk about us. We're just statistics. Oh, well, the number of dead should be this much. Yeah, we've got to flatten the curve. But they're not trying to flatten. There's a plan in front of them that will flatten the curve in an instant, in 40 days and 40 nights. We will know where every single case of the coronavirus is. Because in a 40-day lockdown, anybody that has been in the house with an infected person will show signs of being infected within that 40 days. That's the second reason why it's 40 days. During the first 16 days, everybody clean. You should be cleaning every day, but concentrating on it. Everything that comes into your house, wipe it down. I've got a brand new TV to replace my computer bomber that's sitting there broken. I haven't touched it yet. I made sure I had gloves on when I moved it. I had to get someone to help me get it off the truck. I made sure I was away from him when he helped me and I made the, that was the first thing I cleaned. That got cleaned instantly. I got it on the front veranda and it's in, sitting in the middle of my hallway, Mr. Morrison, because I'm too scared to open that box or touch that box like I should be. Everybody should be wiping down everything that comes into your house, including your food cans. Think about how much everybody touches food and puts it back. Now, I will be doing other streams throughout the day. But at midnight tonight, I will be laying the complete plan out for the world. So if you are watching this as a video or as a stream, share it, copy it, place it on your own channel, tell people to go to the Cannabis Protester website, I'm sorry, YouTube channel, the website's not up yet. Go to Bluebeard 2011, go to Bluebeard 2017 on Twitch, or go to Bluebeard 2011 on, or Bluebeard 2017, I can't remember what um, DLive is on, uh, it's either one of the two, on DLive. Go to them at the appropriate time of midnight Eastern, Stra Stra Eastern Standard Time tonight and watch the video. I will be laying, outlaying the plan to all the people of the earth of the reason why we need to shut down because this is not a hoax. This is most probably the one thing that is real. I am so scared that I am going to get this, that I am spending quite a lot of money tomorrow, that I can't really afford to spend, I should be spending it on food. But without it, during the way the government is handling everything, I need this. Because if they don't do the lockdown soon, it means I'm going to have to go out and buy food again. And I'm going to have to go to my doctors. And I'm talking to every doctor now. 
If you do not already have a system where you are checking on your vulnerable patients, I'm actually quite so surprised my doctor didn't ring me and check on me. Because she knows I need scripts regularly. She knows what I'm like. I, I don't go in there when I need to go in there. She should be checking on me. I'm going to get up her about it tomorrow. Oh, not get up or get up or about it. I'll just sort of say, how come you didn't check on me? But the thing is, if we don't do this, people, we will die. I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to make you understand that this could destroy your family. This could devastate your family. Do you know that Australia's king, future king, could be one of the next dead. He's got the virus. We don't know how he's going yet. I haven't heard too much news about, about him at the moment. I'm worried about him because we're born on the same day, me and Prince Charles. So you want to have no oh then? Yeah, we're born on the same day. And we must make sure that every man, woman and child on the face of this earth survives. And the only way we're going to do it, folks, is ourselves. And if we don't do it ourselves, we're going to die. We really will die. I don't want to see anybody die. I really don't want to see a single person die. And I'm not going to stop until we stop this in its tracks. It must be stopped. And to all my subscribers, I'm very sorry. But during this crisis, I will be sticking by these type of videos. I do apologize. And yeah, I still believe it could be part of Agenda 21 even. I still may have that belief. Because the way all the governments are acting, they're acting like they're trying to get rid of some of the population. So if you're not listening to my words, you're a fucking idiot. Agenda 21, you can go and look it up. It's a UN document. Agenda 21, go online and look it up. Everybody, everybody's at home. See, the problem is, see, the government's half our solution is they're still letting people get around. They haven't organised doctors to ring their patients. They haven't organised everything to happen so that people don't leave their homes. This is what the government has to organise. The government must organise to make sure that every single doctor out there rings up their most vulnerable patients on a regular basis for some doctors that's all their patients and checks on them say do you need a script if, if you need a script tell me what it is and I'll ensure that you get it FaceTime over the thing now some doctors are already doing this but the governments need to make sure that they are all doing this not just a couple of them every single doctor should be told they must do this you must force them to do this because like trying to ring a doctor is a fucking nightmare at the moment you can't ring your doctor I've tried to ring my doctor to get my scripts so now I'm forced to go to my GP tomorrow to get my scripts hence I'm going out and spending nearly $300 to protect myself so that I don't die I'm going to look stupid as hell I'm most probably going to, well, what, what, what are you calling? I, I look like one of those little dudes in suits because I'm not working, walking in my doctor's surgery because that's a confined space if I don't have all the protection gear on. I'm talking gloves, I'm talking suit, I'm talking glasses, I'm talking everything because I can't get through to my doctor. My doctor hasn't rung me to check on me. This is what I mean. Governments must make sure that the doctors contact their patients through this crisis so that we don't have to go out. You're going to have to make that mandatory, Mr. Morrison, that doctors are forced to contact all their patients regularly to see how they're going. 
they're most vulnerable, the ones that need assistance. And don't just check up on the vulnerable, check up on all your patients because they're stuck at home. They might need a script, something might go wrong or they might be scared. And every doctor is the, the shrink, the psych. Everybody talks to their doctor. So you need to make that happen soon, Mr. Morrison. Make sure that every doctor is forced, forced to contact all of their patients. Make it mandatory, Mr. Morrison, today. Not tomorrow, not next week. That should be happening now, right? What we are doing now in Australia, yes, it's slowing the curve. It's slowing, but not stopping it. We must lock down for 40 days and for 40 nights. Now, why are doctors saying that they're getting ready for a second wave in those countries where it's quietening down, even in South Korea, especially in South Korea? They are preparing for the second wave. Now, why is there a second wave of the virus? because they haven't found every case. And they're saying, oh, well, we don't know how to find it. Oh, well, we're gonna lock, just lock down all these people, right? And hope that they don't go out. So you are going to have to have military walking up and down every street, making sure that people do not leave their homes through the 40 day quarantine. These are the things you need to start planning. But the biggest thing, Mr. Morrison, and all the world leaders, make sure that everybody gets accommodated. There are so many unaccommodated buildings out there, rental properties that are not taken. The government should, and I'm sorry, people, if you own a rental property, this is going to hurt. And, but the government should also make sure that these people are not stuck in the homes and that the, the government does, um, yeah, put everything back to normal so that people, that homes that are sequestered, this doesn't happen. But you need to make sure that everybody is accommodated through this crisis. Everybody must be able to lock down. The government may have to pay for some repairs to homes if people screw them up. And don't screw up people's homes if you have been accommodated by the government in somebody else's home. No, it's April 30 won't work loyalty. See, if, if people are still working around, walking around, which they are, even in lockdown countries, they're allowed to go out and get food. It's not gonna work. See, the... All the press is using one word. It's a petri dish, or two words. Petri dish, it's a petri dish. Schools are a petri dish. This is a petri dish. Do you want to know where the real petri dish is? This is going to scare you. Your supermarket, the fresh food section. If you have a fresh food section where everybody just handles the food and the supermarket, trust me, my first call as soon as they open is to Woolworths head office and Coles head office and Aldi's head office. Oh, if they answer their phone. And if I can't get through their head office, I'll go and talk to the managers. Because I know most of the managers in my stores. Because they need to have a person on every single fresh food counter. They must be wearing gloves. They should be the only one touching food. The people should say, okay, well, I want that one, I want that one, I want that one, keeping social distance. Spit guards are going to have to be put around every fresh food section. Right, you put spit guards up on for your checkouts, you should be putting it around the fresh food and you should have an employee, or maybe even two employees that have been checked for the coronavirus. Make sure they are gloved up and master and have them to be the only one that handles the fresh food i.e. the fruit and veg they should be the only ones people should still be allowed to choose which one they want but they should not be touching it and if you do 
you buy fresh food or vegetables from the supermarket, take it home and wash it. And you may even have to use detergent. Some veggies you won't be able to do that. So we need to enact this as well. This is something that must be done. We need to protect the food as well because you're taking your sweet ass time to enact a lockdown. See, Mr. Morrison, all the governments, their first thing at the moment should be planning to lock the world down for 40 days. That means ensuring that everybody gets a 40 day food supply. Work it out. Ration books if you have to so they can go and get it themselves. Make sure that every household is accommodated. I don't know how many times I have to tell you, Mr. Morrison. And trust me, sir, I really am a smart man, not just because I've thought of this, because of my education, because of my ability to research, and because of my IQ. And every world leader should be listening to me at the moment. Your plans aren't fucking working. Why not try mine? I'm telling you now it will work. And it, it's not the whole plan. This is only step one. You've all got my emails. This is just step fucking one. This will find the virus so we can isolate it properly and lock it down and yes those of you that contract it are going to be isolated for a bit longer we put the healthy people back to work in food production money shouldn't exist through this crisis the use of money should not exist because money that's handed over could contain the virus if you have cash on you you are going to have to put it into a put it into a an area where it's not touched. Most money these days is plastic, so you should be sterilizing and disinfecting it. Then store it and quarantine it during this crisis. So that that way, on the other side of the crisis, the money's still good again. We should use tap and go only, or EFOS. Some of us don't have tap and go, Mr. Morrison. Oh, I have tap and go only on one card but I might I have money in that account. So the use of money through this crisis should be banned. Sorry, it should be. Cash should not be used anymore. Banks are going to have to work out a way for people that can't, that don't have these things and only have bank accounts are going to have to issue emergency, some kind of emergency EFOS card and don't tell me you can't do it because clubs and pubs do it all the time. It's like gift cards, you can do it all the time. You just need numbers, right? So that people can access it and access their money. You're going to have to implement this. There are things that have got to be done so that whilst we are waiting for the government to act, everybody else has got to start getting their act together. Now I'm talking to the ventilator people out there. Those of you that make ventilators around the world, hire some of these out-of-work people, build more ventilators, build lots of them and lots of them and lots of them. The government will pay for them, trust me. And if the governments don't get off their asses and order these ventilators, because you know, sir, if we don't act and close the world down, we are going to need them, just like the iron lungs of the past. Remember, we must learn from the past. If we do not learn from the past, we will be doomed. See, these governments shouldn't just be looking at the numbers. See, the number, the only number that I find acceptable is zero death. Okay, so to make zero death at the moment, now there should be an emphasis. The government should be, even if the government has to put every single military man while they're waiting for the crackdown into respirator manufacture. Everybody should, that could and will manufacture a ventilator. You should be have on average 100 to 200 going out your door by the end of the day. You should get all your suppliers to work 
over time. Every, these what should be vital services. Injection molders. Everybody that manufactures the components that you need. They should be sterilized before they are packed. So anybody that goes through the process of manufacturing these ventilators are going to have to make sure every component is sterile before it leaves their care, before it goes on to the next stage. And that stage makes sure it is sterile and that they're sterile when they're putting this together. We have to do this. This is the very first thing we should be doing is making sure we have enough ventilators. This is where the money should currently be going. Right, this business stimulus package, sir, money is going to be useless while we are locked down. If you lock us down properly, there's no need for money. All you have to do is worry about the fucking food. That's it. And the security outside, start disinfecting outside. When we know we have healthy people after the 40 days and 40 nights, then we start a massive disinfectant program. Then we take another step and we take another step. But if we don't lock down, we'll never find the virus. We will get a second wave. It could mutate during this time. But I guarantee you, if we don't act by July 1st, 60% of the world's population is going to be infected. And I'm, if I could get up the um, display, I would, folks, because on the display... It's, um, yeah, this is one of the issues I had before. This is why I shut down the stream. All I can do is get over certain things and just drag them over to the other screen and let you see that what I can get on the small screen. And um, because even that's disappeared at the moment. See, there we go. So there, that, that's, that's all I can get up at the moment. But the whole point is, folks, that if we don't act soon, we're all going to die. And I'm sorry I've got a stream at this time of the day because I do want the message to get out as a stream because some people only watch my stuff as a stream. And they like to see it as a stream so they come in and comment. And streaming's very hard at the moment because at certain times of the day you can't stream. So I've got to upload them as videos but I'm still recording them while I stream or trying to stream. I know this one's getting out because I can see it getting out. But we must, we must act. We must act together. And why am I, why am I not just saying addressing the governments? Because for this to work, you, the people, have to do this as well. We must all make sacrifices, rents, bills, Everything should be put on hold as if this 40-day period is taken out of time. It's easy. The economy, well, if we do this, the economy won't die. But if they keep on dragging the way they're going at the moment, it will. See, are they trying to destroy the economy? They could be. Agenda 21, remember that. They could be trying to kill the economy. They could be trying to kill us at the same time. But by locking the world down, just stopping everybody from going outside their houses or out their apartment doors, and unfortunately, woe, as the Bible says, woe to those who live side by side in the apartment buildings. Maybe the Bible should have, should have added in apartment buildings. You're not going to be able to go out your front doors. Guards are going to have to be put on duty. And yeah, I'm, it's going to be scary. Martial law is going to have to be enacted. And it's going to have to be lifted after the crisis. But during this crisis, if you are healthy and are released from quarantine or lockdown, you may get put into food production you may get put in to bolster a service. If you've got certain qualities or certain things, and we need those things to get the world going again. If you're clerical, you might have to do clerical work for hospitals. You may have to do clerical work for the government. 
well, you might have to bolster link, bolster Centrelink or social security offices in America, wherever you are, you may be asked to bolster something else. Because see, we're gonna to have to bolster all the services afterwards. We're gonna to have to forget about luxuries altogether for, until this is over, I mean it. If, if you're thinking about, okay, well, I went out and bought a TV because that is my computer monitor. That's to me not a luxury, that's a necessity because I can't read the screen without it. As I said, I can't, I can, can't read the chat. I can see it's going on and I've got to get to it. I've got to move it back and forwards away from the screen to see the chat because I can't find my glasses because I'm in the process of doing a massive spring clean in the middle of autumn. See, I've put my time to use. I'm cleaning my house during this process and I'll clean it through the 40 days, 40 nights. But I also need to prepare. I've still got to try and get enough food for my dogs. I've got to buy a few more bags and have enough food for my dogs. And Mr. Morrison, that's not hoarding. That's preparing, sir. That's preparing to make sure I have enough food for 40 days and 40 nights. I have. I've always had that food. I've got enough for six months. But all I'm doing when I shop, because I'm still eating that food, but I'm rotating, I still have to replace it. So I just go out and do a normal shop. To me, I like, I went in and um, whenever I go out, my dogs, there's more, like people are amazed, like there's a hundred bucks worth of dog food in the trolley for one week for my dogs. Because I don't, I don't go out that much anyhow, even when I'm not sick. This is not going on, I won't go out that much. I do my shopping weekly. And my trolley's always got 10 bags of dog food in it. People say, oh, you're what are you buying how many dogs? So I just, what I've done is I've actually taken a video of the dogs and I just say, that's why I buy 10 bags of dog food. Easy. Solve that problem in a heartbeat. But that's all we're doing, Mr. Morrison and world leaders. We're just trying to get ready because we know, the people know that this has to happen. But see, I think it's going to take one of you guys to lose your own family before you start acting properly so you don't lose anybody else. And this is what it's about, Mr. Morris. And so we see we're not numbers. We are your, no, I'm not your family, but someone is your family out there. And I bet you someone in your family agrees with what I'm saying. We don't want to die. None of us want to die. We want to stop this in its tracks. And we can. By isolating everybody, you think of it like a hospital. Like by isolating the sick cases. But see, you know, at the moment, you don't know who the fucking sick are, so you isolate everything. We want, this is something so viral and so deadly that we have to isolate everything, the world. The whole fucking world at the same fucking time or this will not work. We will get a second wave if we don't do it. And we could get a third wave if we don't do it. But this way, in the 40 days, because if it's on a surface for 16 days, that means the infection would have affected somebody in the household, they would have caught it, would have spread it. If they're not cleaning, they're stupid. But if anybody in that household is going to get it, they're going to get it within that 40 days. Even if one person goes down sick and the rest go down sick. Yes, medical care can be dished out. It's easy to do it when you've got everybody and know where everybody is. You're going, the, one of the first things you're going to have to do is most probably hire retired ambulance drivers, retired police, get them all back to work. Everybody, rehire them temporarily. Call it national service, yep. We need to draft all these people back into service. I'm sorry, but we do. We need to bolster everything so that we have enough people. And the thing is, when we do it, we have to quarantine them from their families. And I'm sorry, it's going to have to be done. So that they're not going home and getting infected from their families and they're not going home if they get it, if they do get infected and infecting their families. 
it's going to be the strangest way anybody has worked together. Well, we're learning how to do that now. We're taking the initial steps of learning how to do that by social distancing. For those emergency service people, now ambulances, well, they've got their own criteria and everything like that, and that is working, so we leave it up to them. And those countries that don't have a good system, please learn from Australia. I know Australian systems are good. Do you know, the, I think the Australian Ambulance Service is the best in the world. They are better than the doctors. They know what's going on. Because, like, I'll give you an example. The day I had my heart attack, everything was ready. Everything was ready in the ambulance. They didn't bother, like, catheterizing me up in the, in, the, in the class. They got me in that ambulance and got me to the hospital. And I'll tell you now, every time I've been in an ambulance in Australia, and I, I truly mean it, guys, you are the best in the world. I really, truly mean it. You are the best in the fucking world. I can't mention a name, but I've worked alongside uh, one of the ambulance drivers in another emergency service. And she's amazing. And unfortunately, you know, she's had to take me to hospital a few times. Very nice person. Brilliant, smartest lady I've ever met in my life. Smarter than my doctor friends, and she's only an Amber. She's smart. Drives a truck in one of the other services. Won't mention what it is. Oh no, no, I can mention it. Yeah, she's. Oh no, I better not. I better not. But the thing is, those of you out there, no matter what, if you are SES, you're going to be needed. And you're going to be needed to be quarantined from your families during this crisis. If I wasn't so vulnerable, I'd most probably go back to the SES. But unfortunately, I'm one of the vulnerable, so I can't afford to. But I know if I could, I would volunteer my services. But we have to make sure those people are healthy before they even go. They should be starting to be tested daily because they're already handling, some of these people are already handling cases. We have to bolster them now and we have to protect our doctors, our nurses, our ambulance, our police. Now I'm talking about the police, I'm going to mention one thing. There was a Muslim lady arrested down in Sydney. I think it was Sydney or Victor. I can't remember exactly where I saw the news story. She spat in a police officer's face. That woman should be charged with attempted murder. And I'm serious, boys. Charge her with attempted murder. Because anybody that knowingly spreads the virus or threatens to spread the virus, that's attempted murder. Remember that. That lady should be charged with attempted murder. Anybody that sells anything from eBay knowingly drop ships from China or knowingly did or do what my seller did should be charged as well saying it's in Australia and this is something the government is going to have to put laws up they're going to have to put a, a thing called item uh, location fraud and make it a crime if you say an item is in this location it should be a criminal offence to drop ship it from somewhere else. If you are drop shipping, you should say that item is from China, not from Australia. If you don't have stock in your store, you shouldn't be selling it. And you, unless you state your drop shipping. These are things we're going to have to think about afterwards. But Mr. Morrison, please, for fuck's sake, 21 days for the quarantine of all mail and incoming containers. 21 days. Just in case someone in the handling process is infected. It's got to be quarantined for 21 days. And the people handling it after the 21 days are going to have to be tested before they handle it so that they don't pass the virus on. This is the problem with the mail. We don't know where those people are. And this is a problem inside a supermarket. If you are going to a supermarket, right, you should put on a pair of gloves and Coles, Woolworths, Aldi, whoever, should be out the front, which I know they do at Coles and Woolworths, 
right? They've got, while they're cleaning their Ran, their trolleys and everything like that they're using these wet wipe type things they have them and they give them out normally on their door and you just take them yourself right after you put your rubber gloves on you should clean them with one of those so that as you're handling the food not the fresh food they should have staff doing all that for you should be like the old green grocer where the green grocer handled the food not you These steps have to be taken for our own protection. Because currently, everything we are doing at the moment, even under current social isolation, is not working. The virus is still spreading, but the government doesn't care about that. See, the government doesn't care if any more died. They were just a statistic. I'm not a fucking statistic, Mr. Morrison. I'm a fucking human being. And this human being is going to see you taken from power after this because if I can't get you out before and can't get the Labour Party in or another government party in power straight away or if your own party doesn't kick you out like they should and put someone in that will take serious measures because the only way to handle this Mr Morrison is by taking extremely serious measures. Measures that you wouldn't even dream of. Because that time is over. The time to act is now. This is a pandemic, sir. People are fucking dying. And you just count us as numbers. You should be trying to save every man, woman and child on the earth. Because that's all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to save every man, woman and child on the face of this fucking planet. Because I believe we all have the right to live. Yes, we're overpopulated, right? We can fix that by different means. You don't have to try and kill everybody. You just limit the amount of people, the amount of family somebody can have. Do what China did for a while. If we are that overpopulated, that's what you do. Work That worked in China, sort of. But not one child, for fuck's sake. China's already got that problem because of the one-child policy because their numbers are decreasing. They went too far. But then, that's afterwards. At the moment, we have to deal with this fucking crisis. If we don't deal with this crisis now, we're all going to die. You, Mr Morrison, could be the next person to die. You bet, unless you already know that this is government set and you've already got an antidote, maybe you do. This could be Agenda 21, folks. They could actually have antidotes and not fucking telling us. That could be why he's telling all these little porkies and got that little glit in his eyes now instead of the little smirk. When a politician talks to you, watch their face. Look at tells Watch everything they've ever done. You'll see their tells, especially with politicians. They are not good poker players. And yeah, I've played with politicians. They are shit poker players because they've got too many tells. I would love taking their chips off them in a poker tournament. And yeah, they're allowed to play poker. In Australia, we're allowed to play poker. We play tournament poker. Different. We win a prize at the end. It's totally different to a poker game. But you still use the same tactics. And that man is lying through his teeth. And I mean he's lying through his teeth. And I believe a lot of other leaders are lying through their teeth. I don't know them personally. I haven't seen enough of their videos to know if they're lying. But if I sit and watch their video in about five minutes, I could tell... Because what it is, a tell is something, a little quirk. Look for them, especially with your politicians at the moment. Look for them. They're lying to you. All of them lying to you. They know that this can be stopped, folks. They know it can be stopped. And it really, truly can be stopped. By locking down long enough, we will know exactly where we are. All we have to do is fucking isolate the people. 
total lockdown. Money doesn't exist because, and the economy is not going to die. As long as you, you just make it so money doesn't exist for this period of time. Money is useless. And you just make sure you feed the people. You are going to have to take over food distribution. You are going to have to make sure that everybody gets fed. Food may be sequestered from major supermarkets to do this. Food may be sequestered and manufacture, food manufacturers, you may be told that you must produce for the nation. And the government should put the bill. This is where the money should be going, is to getting everybody ready to find the virus. But once we've found the virus, then we can start cleaning up. And all this bullshit that it's getting better in China and Italy, it's not. It's not. The doctors are telling you so. They're telling the doctors that know all about this from all the organisation and governments are now going public telling you that the bullshit you're hearing from your politicians are lies. So we need to start listening and acting as one people. All over the world, we must act together. If we don't act together, folks, we're going to die. This virus can mutate. This the virus itself proves it can mutate because it used to be SARS. It still is SARS, it's just a different version. To those idiots out there that don't think it's real, it's fucking real. And I'm talking to the politicians that don't think this is fucking real because there's a couple of you out there. Fuck. See, one thing that worries me that this could be Agenda 21, folks, is the fact that they're telling people that not to worry about wearing a mask. Don't worry about it. The way India has handled this, yeah, they're locking down, but they've locked down. I think that's the only country that listened to me, but they've locked down without thinking. This has to be worldwide, all together. Not just one country doing it. Not just rushing to do it either. Plan. Get your people fed. Get them home. You make sure they get home. Not in packed buses. Social isolate. Yeah, you're gonna, it's going to take more buses and it's going to take things. But separate them far enough away from each other. Cab drivers, man, you should be taken off the road. Not one of you is wearing a mask. Uber drivers. I haven't seen a new... I've seen a couple of Ubers today. Not one of them is wearing a mask. They're letting people jump in the front seat. Bang. Social isolation gone out the fucking window. Yes, some people need food. Those people that don't have transport. Woolworths, Coles in Australia will deliver. This is why the government should be organising the food distribution. Once we have enough food... Right, Those in isolation in hotels and motels are going to have to be given 40 days food supply. They are going to need ways to cook that food and clean up afterwards. Now here's something else that needs to be done. And people aren't, all the greenies are going to hate this. Every ounce of trash. Every ounce of trash. Yes, garbage day. It's still going to have to happen, but every ounce of trash from now until the end of the virus must go into landfill. Sorry, folks, plastic the lot. Unless they sterilise the plastic, which can be done. Plastic can be sterilised. They just have to run it through a sterilisation bar. But what is not must go straight to landfill because it's going to be dangerous otherwise. Because that virus, if it comes from an affected household, is the have the government? I don't even know if the government has even thought about that. Locking these hotels and motels down, are they landfilling that rubbish? Yes, we're going to put a bit of plastic back under the earth. Yes, it's going to take a long while to break down. But guess what? It turns back into oil. Yeah, it turns back into oil eventually.
So we've got to take extra precautions, but these are steps that they should have already planned, and I don't think they've even planned that one. So Mr. Morrison, listen to that tip. Think about it, Mr. Morrison. The garbage, especially from these lockdown people, you don't know, yeah, you know where everybody is, but are you gonna tell the garbage men, okay, this garbage has gotta go and pick up this garbage from that place? You're going to have to landfill everything. During, especially up until you wake up to yourselves and lock down. But you can't just lock down yourself. This must be a worldwide organization. And guess what? I wanna hear the government talk about this at the UN. I wanna hear this. I wanna see this on the TV. I wanna see what's going on in our parliaments while this is going on. If you do an Uber conference meeting, I want that broadcast over the air. We the people have the right. You are supposed to be acting for us and you're not. None of you are. We're just figures and numbers and death rates. But we are not. We are fucking humans. That's why I'm saying if the government doesn't lock down by a certain time, I will tell you to lock down and you should. Because if you don't lock down when it starts getting bad, you're going to be one of those 60%. And if they, if they don't lock down soon, we are going to have to lock down for longer. I've already made plans to feed, feed my animals in the future. I've now... I will have enough food to wait until I can grow my food. My food is going to be cabbage and collie and everything like that. I'm going to be eating like a Russian and so are my dogs. I'll make sure my dogs get fed, no matter what. Even if I, we have to catch rabbits, because we got tons of rabbits around here. I can lure them into the garden, right, real easy. I'll just set up traps. We'll be eating rabbit stew, all of us. There's, trust me, there's that many rabbits in Carrington. Yeah, I could eat rabbit stew and with and feed me dogs with rabbit stew every night if I wanted to. But I don't hunt unless I need to. I hunt now. I'm hunting already. I got a trap out there to catch a rabbit. I wouldn't mind rabbit stew actually at the moment. But trust me, when I prepare it, I'll take extra precautions just in case someone has actually patted that rabbit in the last day. I'll actually clean the fur of the rabbit. But the whole point is, we have to take certain steps to control everything, folks. We really do. But if the government doesn't do it, we, are the, we the people are going to have to. And it's going to be easy to do, actually. All we do is we just say, no, that's it. We've had you. You're gone when this is over. We're locking down. And that's how easy it's going to be. See, the Indians know that this is going to happen. That's why they're all trying to rush home. They're all trying to rush home because they know a lockdown is needed. The people of the world know the lockdown is needed. See, I, I, I've been asking people to do this and asking people to translate this and it is being done, trust me, this is being done, it's being translated. And if you do see any of my videos and you can speak another language, please translate it into your language and share the video, especially with the updated CC on it, the closed captions, so people can understand it and know what I'm saying. Because we need to do this as a people. And I seriously have de declared war on the coronavirus. I'm not going to stop until it's gone. And I'm not going to stop lobbying the governments and the world leaders to do something until they act. Because the longer they go, the more of us are going to die. It could be your mum. It could be your dad. It could be your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter. It could be a granddaughter. Yes, children are, are sick now. And that's even scarier. And I'm now to the schools. You need to get your fucking act together. Every single one of you. If you have schools open right now, you're fucking idiots. And if anything happens to those children, you should be held accountable. Just because the government hasn't shut you down, you should be shutting down. You, the schools, should be shutting down. 
As I said, there's a program out there called Uber Conference. It's a web page, and you can have 50 people, even on free account. You have to adjust your, your school lessons to 45 minutes if you use free accounts. Can be done. There's another program called Zoom. That's what my, my teachers are doing, unfortunately. I'm not attending classes today. I didn't attend classes today online, and I'm not attending them tomorrow because my mum's being buried on Wednesday and there's certain things that have to be done. But if we don't act like a people, if we don't act together as a global people, and we, if we don't act at the same time all over the earth, we are going to die. See, this won't be God sorting the wheat from the chaff. This will be the government sorting the wheat from the chaff. They're trying to get rid of the sick and the ill first. Right? If this is Agenda 21, that's what this virus does. It gets rid of the sick and the ill. As if we're worth nothing. So if this is part of Agenda 21, man, they should be charged with murder. And I reckon government should be charged with murder for the next death. Because if they don't act and lock the world down, I'm calling for a Hague trial of all these world leaders that didn't act in time. And more people died. Because more people are dying every single day. This is why it's a war. People are dying. And our governments are collaborating with the virus. Our governments are collaborators with the virus. If they don't lock the world down for 40 days and 40 nights, they should be charged with collaboration with a deadly virus. And I'm sorry they should. It's not a joke. And they should be charged. And they should go to the Hague. And war trials should go up. No, because we are at war. We're at war with a virus. And unfortunately, our governments are colluding with this virus to kill us off. They don't give a fuck about us. They're not trying to stop it. Listen to your government. Listen to the way they speak. They're not trying to stop it. They don't give a fuck about it. We are just a statistical number. See, the world leaders that are saying they got it, they could be lying. I don't think they are, but they could be. If this is Agenda 21, that could all be lies. But see, we are now getting politicians with the virus. So if you are a politician, you should be standing up with me and saying we need to lock the fucking world down to find every case. If we don't lock the fucking world down, we're all gonna fucking die when it mutates because it will keep on mutating and mutating and take more people out. It's already outstruck the Spanish flu. Oh, I'm going to have to read you these figures, folks. Unfortunately, because of the simple fact that I can't get the display up, I will have to actually read these figures. I'm going to have to blow the web page up. I've just got to find them. And it's scary as hell. Oh, here we go. No, that's not it. I've got a few others. I've done nothing but look and research this, folks. So not that page. And the thing is, I have researched it. That's the thing. I have researched this. And it's scary, folks. The figures are scary as hell. And they're getting worse. The fact that by Gen July 1st, 60% of humankind will be infected with the coronavirus. That means we could lose up to 20% of the world's population. 20% of the world's population could die. Part of that 20% could be you or your fucking family. See, I am not trying to fear monger. This is not fear porn, folks. This is reality. I'm trying to teach you from lessons from the past. I'm trying to make you realize that we have to start doing things they did in the past i.e. we had to build hundreds of, oh, no, it was actually thousands of iron lungs to save children in the past. And we did. We saved them by building those iron lungs. We have to now build ventilators. If our governments don't act, this is the first priority. 
If our government doesn't act and we have to act, but in the process we need to build these ventilators for those of the ones that get sick. Those ventilator companies, you have to get off your ass and manufacture, manufacture, manufacture. If you know of a company that makes ventilators, if you are a doctor or a nurse, pass this video on and tell them they need to make these fucking ventilators. Force the government to buy them because we, we know they need them. Bolster your workforce. There's so many people out there out of work in Australia and I know there's a ventilator company in Australia because I know the ventilator my uncle was on was made in Australia. So we need to get together, folks. And we need to act as a people because if we don't stand up as a community, together, as a community, we will die. See, yes, we're isolated from each other. I feel very isolated today because I'm trying to read a fucking chat that I can't read, I don't have my glasses and I don't have my big TV anymore because it's broke. I haven't set the new one up yet. So I'm vulnerable. To me, I can't see what the fuck's going on. But we have to act, and we have to act now. Not next week. Not the week after. Now. I.E. And when I say that, when I talk to the governments, I.E. like India, you've just gone and acted now, without consultation, without doing it with every country, it's not going to work. By doing it yourselves, you're going to get a second wave by somebody that doesn't look infected, hasn't shown signs that has caught the virus while we've got this so-called yeah stay at home policy lockdown no see the reason why we can't stay at home in australia is because we're got to get food because the government isn't organizing anything so we're all at risk we are all at risk everybody and uh, trust me I don't care what I look like. I I have to go to my doctor tomorrow and I'm spending and I've actually just looked at the price. It's actually not $250 when it's converted. That's the US price. Um, I know I can buy it somewhere locally, so that's going to mean it'll be US price plus their profit on top. So I'm most probably going to look at $500 just so I can go to my mum's funeral and my doctor's. But I have to do it, folks. I have to protect myself because I'm extremely vulnerable. I've got a, a node inside my lung. This would kill me instantly, the coronavirus, if I get it. I will be dead pretty quick. That's why I said goodbye to all my subscribers, just in case. I've got other factors. I've got diabetes, high blood pressure, everything this virus is after, I've got. I'm in the highest risk factor of contracting the virus. I'm spending $500. Yeah, I'll do a proper calculation, but I generally just double the figure that's there. But 250, 254 US it is. And, um, because this company sells US. Uh, I didn't know this company was in a in the US as well. But I've got to spend five close to five hundred dollars tomorrow to protect myself so I can go to the doctors. And I go and, and can go to my mum's funeral and send her off. Now please folks, I would normally put I've got to go to the actually I will put that up on the screen. Actually bugger it. Um where is it? Uh, you want the dunny, you want the dunny. I've got to find one that's got one of the dunny on it. Da, 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 da. Dunny, there we go. Bang. Okay, I'll be back in a second, everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> when nature calls, you've got to go, especially when you're an old man.
Now, sorry about that, folks. But... Yeah, when nature calls, then nature calls. Now, the thing is, folks, with... What I'm going to say tonight will be the full plan. You need to tell everybody to get online at midnight Australian Eastern Standard Time tonight. And turn around and talk about this. See, loyalty, your lockdown is not going to work because only you are locking down. Everybody has to lock down. Yes, essential services are going to have to work. They're going to be on the front line of this virus and they are going to have to risk their lives. And yeah, risk their lives. But see, at the end of it, yeah, we're going to be in trouble. This is why it's got to be 40 days. So if any of them catch it out there, we're going to see them in quarantine. Yes, they're going to be in quarantine longer than the 40 days. But we need essential services out there. There are even going to be some essential services out there that don't want to go to work. So please don't overburden them. Please don't do anything that cause a major accident. When you're out there driving your cars, drive fucking sensibly at the moment. Don't overburden our hospitals. Do not overburden our hospitals. Do not overburden our doctors. Only go to the doctors or have the doctor contact you when you need to. But doctors should be contacting and forced to contact Mr. Morrison, forced to contact their patients. They should be forced. They should be told that they can be charged if they don't contact their vulnerable patients on a regular basis. Right? Because trying to call the doctors is a nightmare. So the doctors should be responsible for getting out. Those doctors that don't have secretaries, and there's a lot of them out there, that don't have secretaries, you're going to have to hire a, te a te temporary secretary. Have her sit in a different place so she, she can get the calls for you or accept the incoming calls, you may have to put a second line on your business. Or use your fax line, and you can use fax lines to accept calls. So that you can have one, one for incoming, one for you ringing out. And that way, if you do get a patient coming in, you know to ring that patient and talk to that patient. So you need to do this as well. Ambos, please take, take good care of yourselves, please. Please take good care of yourselves, especially in Australia. You're our, um, you're our safety net. Because you've got to get us to the hospital if anything happens to us during the crisis. Please look after yourselves. You guys take all the precautions you have to. I don't care if you cost the government half their salary. Governments should give up their salary during this crisis. If we have to give up our salaries, governments should have to give up theirs. Every government leader should give up their salary during this crisis. Donate it to charity, right? But make sure the home, and talking about charity, make sure the homeless get homed so that this works. You're quarantining tourists and everybody else. Quarantine the, the homeless. They're going to have to be quarantined. Everybody's going to have to be quarantined. Homeless included. Start finding out where they are now. Get them into some kind of accommodation. They're going to need it. And if you haven't put your homeless into hotels Hawaii, and I'm talking to the Hawaiian government, if you haven't put your people into hotels because there's so many of it, normal people out there stuck on the streets, and you should see it, folks. It's a, it's a crying shame. It really is. I thought I was going to see the most beautiful country in the world. All I saw was homeless. That's all I saw. It was shocking. America doesn't give a shit about their homeless. And that is, a, that is, yeah, unfortunately, Australia is pretty much the same way as well. And it's wrong. That's fucking wrong. And I believe that we should make a lot of changes to our governments. We should make laws. The people, we should make some laws that govern these pricks. Especially when it comes to one of these. 
there should be some civilian consultants on these programs, on these meetings, right? There should be a few of us that are consulted, not just your friends, but the general public should be consulted on these plans. We should know what's going on about the planning of what you're planning to do with us. Because you've got to remember, Mr. Morris and all world leaders and Queen, you're talking about us. We want to know what the fuck you're saying and we have the right to know what the fuck you're saying. And if we don't start fucking hearing it and seeing it, if your government doesn't start showing you what they're planning, why they're planning it, and actually let the people see, and it's easy to get response governments, do you want to know how you can see what the people want? You do a YouTube stream and you open a chat room. Then you'll get what the people fucking want. Do a stream and open the chat and just leave it as an open chat. Don't moderate it. Listen to what the people say. And yes, you're going to get told off. You will see that everybody wants your head, Mr. Morrison. See, you're too scared to do that. I know you are. Because you don't want to see what the people really think. We think you're an idiot. And trust me, today, while I was at getting and doing what I had to do, everybody said the same fucking thing. You're an idiot, Mr. Morrison. You're a fucking idiot. No one likes you. No one. And I'm not trying to be a bully, Mr. Morrison. I used to be one of the bullied. But I stood up for myself and I learned to stand up to you guys as well. I don't back down for anybody. I'm not scared of governments. I will fight my government if I have to fight my government. I will stand up for my rights if I have to. And for those that, are, that don't know me, back... In the days, I forget what year it was, when the Shearers protested over the, dub, uh, the double tooth, the, the big wide combs that the Kiwis were doing, and they were, they were camped out around Parliament House. While they were camped out, they even had to put up with me going around. If you've ever heard an ice cream truck, it plays green sleeves. If you don't know what green sleeves is, go and look it up. I drove that ice cream truck, even though it had a rebuilt gearbox with hemp rope. Yeah, it was actually hemp rope to make a gearbox casing out of hemp rope. Played Valdari, Valdara, Valdari, Valdara, Valdari, da 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 Valdari, Valdara. Mate, that song is stuck in my head and it will be stuck in the head until the day I die. I'll never forget it. Because I used to hear it eight hours a day, every fucking day. Even when I was protesting. When I was doing that job, the best job I ever had was my own business. Couldn't get a license. And when they wouldn't give me a license up in Queensland, because I wasn't the actual manufacturer, because Home Ice Cream tried to put me out of business. So I took the fight to Canberra, and I pretty much held them. I held their press conferences to ransom. They couldn't do press conferences, well because they, they had little loot round, roads around each door. I just used to drive my truck around the loop roads while I was trying to do interviews. I made them listen to me. And, I made them, and I'm not afraid of them. And I'm, I'm not afraid to stand up to them now. I'm not afraid to tell them that I plan to remove this government. And I'm not afraid to remove this government. And I will use the way that had been set up to remove that government. All I have to do is convince the Attorney General and the Queen that this government is fucking up, which won't be too hard to do, because this government should have locked down our border the very first fucking day that there was a pandemic declared. Should have been locked the fuck down. Every country should have locked down the moment they heard the word pandemic. That would have been the first step or when they hear the word epidemic, they should lock borders down. 
maybe we wouldn't get a pandemic if they locked borders down the moment they heard the word epidemic. So yeah, the government has got a lot, your government's got a lot to answer for as well. In India, treat your people with a bit more fucking respect. That was atrocious, going out with canes, whipping fucking people. That is fucking bullshit. And I, um, folks, just please forgive me, um, that is Red Cross calling me. I have to have Red Cross call me on a daily basis to make sure I'm still alive. And I'll ring again any second. Or the other one will ring. Alright. Hello? Good morning, Anthony. This is V from Red Cross. Right? Yeah, good over here. How are you? Just letting you know I'm actually streaming while, while this is going on. Everybody knows that you're calling me and everything. By the way, you're doing a great job. Well, Red Cross yeah. is doing a wonderful job at the moment because you've taken on so many other people as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Going. yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, mate. Yeah. It's sort of, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm fighting the government as usual, <laughs> trying to let the people know that we need to lock down the world. And um, yeah. Yeah, it's sort of, I'm the man trying driving to do it. So, and I will do it. Um, and at the end of it, I'm gonna. And after this is all finished, I'm gonna make sure uh -huh. Scott Morrison's are removed as well. So, yeah. What do you What do you think of Scott Morrison? Uh, he, he, he's an idiot. Is oh, you can say it, man. He's an idiot. We all know it. We all know yeah. he's, he's a liar yeah. too. He's a fucking liar. Oh. I know that. Everybody oh. does. But the thing is, mate, it's sort of like we need to do it. We need to lock the world down for 40 days and 40 nights. It's the only way to find the virus. It really is. Yeah. But yeah. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I'm still trying to cope yeah. with mum. Still trying to cope with mum's death. And oh. um, but we yeah. bury we bury her on Wednesday, so oh. yeah, everything will be good. But um, I've got to, I've got to get, I've got to get, I've got to get back to my stream, and then I'm off to bed. And um, but thanks for the call, mate. But trust me, dude, use it, use, you, yeah, I will, mate. I will. I'm going to make sure of that. And uh, please make sure that you're fine too. You do such a fantastic job. You really do. Thank you so much. No worries. Thanks, mate. Bye. Bye. Right, folks, the reason why I actually let you actually hear that call is because that really is the Red Cross. I am that vulnerable that I have to be called and contacted daily, even before this crisis happened. It's because my immune system and I could drop dead at any time. I am that sick. But I don't want anybody else being sick. This is why I know that if I don't go and spend this 500 bucks tomorrow, I could be a dead man because I'm still going to have to go and buy groceries. I'm still going to have to go to the doctors. And that's the one that scares me the most. So I don't care what I look like tomorrow. Suit it up. I'm going to, I have to go to the doctors. I've got to get the scripts because I can't ring her. Can't get through. So doc and doctors, you need to fucking start ringing your vulnerable patients daily. Contact them. Well, not daily, every couple of days. Make sure if they're, if they're really, really sick, yeah, contact them every day. Uh, whatever frequency they visit you, that's when you should be calling them. And my doctor is, well, she's always telling me I, got, I should be in there every week. Because I am pretty thick. I am really crook still. I done, went through five major surgeries last year and unfortunately it did a lot of damage to my body. One of them is my liver. So, yeah, I'm in a really bad way. And that's why I had the Red Cross ring me. Because I don't want to be one of these people that get found six months and my family have to deal with a skeleton and a massive rot. Um, I don't want to be found that way. If I die, I want to think, because police have full permission to yeah, bang my door down and if I'm not contactable and everything like that, sign a paper saying it so that anything happens to me, yeah. They can get in and check, make sure I'm still alive. Because I could have another stroke. I could have another heart attack. And um, thanks to the Red Cross, I know that if I have a stroke, at least I'm going to be found within a day. 
I might might wind up major like my mum, where I can't talk anymore and stuff like that, but at least I'll still be alive. If I have a heart attack, hopefully I get found in time. Because sometimes heart attacks aren't bad enough to kill you straight away, but people will kill you if you don't get medical treatment. They might knock you down or you might have a fall or something like that, which I unfortunately do have some lately because I've got really bad knees and a really bad back. I can barely walk. And I am extremely vulnerable, extremely. For me to have to turn around and admit that I need the Red Cross to ring me every day took a lot, trust me. The hospital contacted me about it and recommended it. it. Took me five days to set it up because it was like big tough me. Don't I don't need Red Cross. I don't need it. Do you want to know something? I do need it. I really do need it because I don't. Want to, when I thought about it, I said I, I thought to myself, I don't want to see. I don't want to see my family have to not contact me, don't hear from me, and then one of them come over to my home and they find me all in a massive gooey mess. I don't want that happening. I wouldn't wish that on the worst person. So I thought to myself, okay, I've got to sign up to this program, and I did. And they do a wonderful job. If you are a vulnerable person and you don't have anybody near you and everything like me, all my family lives far away from me, all of it. All of my sisters, everything. I've got a stepbrother that lives close, that's it. And we haven't spoken in many years, I don't know why, but it's sort of, yeah, he doesn't pop around or anything like that. He lives very close. But... The thing is, I just don't want to be like that. And Mr. Morrison, I don't want to die. This is what I mean. This is why I'm fighting so hard. Because I'm one of the vulnerable, Mr. Morrison. I don't want to die. I do not want to die. And I will make sure that you get removed from power, sir, if you do not act properly and convince the world that this needs to be done. And I and tell you now, you know that this will find the virus. It's own. This is the first step, Mr. Morrison. All the 40 days and 40 nights to save the world is, is to find and isolate all cases of the virus. Once you have an infected house, unfortunately, you know that others may get infected. But once you have that infected person in that house, you have to go into a isolation program where the, the really sick person is isolated and get the, the, the so-called healthy ones into a, new, into a new isolation period. Yes, it, it won't need to be the full 40 days. You make sure the area, the, the place where they're going is 100% sterile. So that if they are healthy, they stay healthy. And, it, and that extra quarantine period is to show signs if they've got the virus and they need to be tested regularly. You need to get these tests out now. And to that company down in uh, wherever you are that are making these new tests that cost 10 bucks, work on it, work on it fucking fast. Find the, find the make it work. I'm an inventor. And some things can be invented really fast. But if, if it's not right, don't get it out there. Make sure it tests positive every time. Every time. Make sure it tests positive every time. You don't need to test it on people yet. You just need to test it on the virus. And it'll be easy. So we've got to take all these steps and do it. But the plan is complex. Yes. But it's also easy. See, it's complex for the government because a logistical nightmare of getting food to every person is a logistical nightmare because the government is going to take over, is going to have to take over food production. They're going to have to take over everything. They are going to have to make sure that the food still flows. Farmers are going to have to work just as hard, if not harder. See, in the old days throughout the war, we bolstered our services. And we're all going to have to do their part. I am doing my part by making sure it happens. Because I'm the voice to make sure it happens. That's my job now, to make sure that you know that this needs to be done. 
I have never let people copy my videos and I'm telling you that you can copy this video but only these videos not any of my older videos you're not allowed to touch them you copy those ones I'll have you for copyright strike but any of the coronavirus videos you may copy any of the cannabis protester videos you may copy and put on your own channels I believe in these causes wholeheartedly folks I really truly do we need to stop the virus we really truly need to stop the virus and if we don't we're screwed we are screwed we are screwed if we don't stop the virus and as I said I don't care what people say when they see me when I go to the doctors and when I, I and I've got to go to the hospital on Thursday too that one I've got to go and see that's my vascular surgeon I've got to go and see her but I'm going to be dressed up to the fucking hilt whilst I go through the public I'm going to make sure my doctor wears a mask before I even let her touch me I'm going to make sure she's got gloves on before she even touches me that's an appointment I can't miss, but I want to be protected. As I said, I'm willing to pay out $500. It's pretty much my stimulus package. I'm spending it before it comes. I'm actually spending my um, food budget to get it. But I am not walking into this place without it. I really am not. Because I have to protect myself. Because it means, what it's going to mean, it's going to be mean I'm quarantined even though I'm there. And with the vascular surgeon, it's pretty much her just reviewing the new x-rays and the new scans and everything like that. Um, and telling me whether I need more medications or whether I need surgery. So that's pretty much what the appointment is. She may, not, may examine me, I don't know. But I don't care how ridiculous I look. I really don't. I have to fucking protect myself. I, as I said, like I've got to have Red Cross call me daily. That's how sick I am. So I'm going to take every precaution to protect myself. You, the people, should be taking precautions to protect yourself. They say that bandanas don't work. They are only good if, for coughing. Everyone should be wearing one for one reason. Just in case you have a cough or accidentally sneeze, you should be wearing a bandana over your face. Every single woman, man and child on the face of this planet should at least be wearing a cowboy style bandana whether you make it out of a sheet or whether you make it out of a shirt and should be wearing it just in case you sneeze because when you sneeze you've got to remember you have no control what if you you walk past someone that you're a you you find that you walk past a scent or something like that and you sneeze this is why you should be wearing the mask Everybody at the moment should be wearing a mask just in case you have the virus and you get that sudden sneeze. You should be wearing a mask of some description. Every man, woman and child, doesn't matter who you are, you should be wearing a mask. Because the virus spreads by droplets. The droplets come out of your sneeze. And yes, it can go airborne only if it lands on a particle. And it might go a little bit further. But it's not that airborne. And it is a respiratory disease. It develops in to what is called ADRS. Oh, sorry, ARDS. AR, acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. You drown in your own, your lungs drown. Virtually, that's what happens. You can't breathe because your lungs are full of water. And that's not a nice way to go. I don't think anybody would want to go through it. I don't think a single person would want to go through it. Like, I know a lot of people don't watch this stream, especially at this time of day, because not many are on. But I don't care. It's not really a stream. It's, I stream for the ones that do get on and watch. But I also stream while I'm making the video. So I'm killing two birds with one stone, getting my message out and recording the video that I'm about to plaque up on the channel any time soon. And they're the ones that I share with the, with the Prime Minister and all his underlings of the videos. 
But we need to act and we need to act fast. But we need to plan. And we need to supply our people with 40 days and 40 nights, Mr. Morrison. If we don't do this, and you, I can guarantee you, sir, I, you will be one of the first people that I have before the Hague. If you don't start preparing to lock the world down to find the virus, any world leader, I will see you all appear before the Hague for murder because you don't give a fuck about us. You're doing nothing to help. Nothing, sir. I don't care who you are, what country you lead. If you do not lock our world down for 40 days and 40 nights in a global effort and feed your people, I will see every single one of you before the Hague. And I'm not just talking the leaders, I'm talking every politician. I will see you up for war crimes because this is a war against a virus. And you are all collaborating with the virus by not acting. You should be trying to fight this virus in every single way you can. You say you are, but I, where's the proof? You see, you just take us as numbers. See, if you wanted to find the virus, you would have us locked down. Yes, some people are still going to fucking die. That's a gibbon. We know that. But if we lock down everybody, and yes, even people in quarantine are going to have to lock down again. Everybody is going to have to lock down because we can't have anybody but essential services out there, i.e. police, army, all the military, ambulances, emergency services. They're the only ones that should be out there controlling everything. Army reserves are already wrecked and prepped. They're already briefed. They know what's going on. They just haven't been told when. But see, the plans that they're doing for is just locking down the hotels. See, the, see this is why they've got to lock down the hotels, because they know that these people left it on their own devices. This is why martial law is going to have to be declared. And it really will have to be declared, folks. Martial law, and here's... The one man that has always spoken out about it, against it, is telling you it needs to happen. Martial law needs to happen. And I'm sorry, folks, it needs to happen. Don't go stupid with it because we're all fucking watching you. Martial law should be that if someone out there, if they, and have places ready where they can be locked down on their own in tight security. Or put a guard on their houses. Once someone fucks up, put a guard on their house, permanent on their house. And if they think about jumping over a fence or the back, make sure there's a guard over the back as well. Because you, we are going to have to take these steps to protect our children, to protect our parents, to protect everybody. If we don't take these steps, people, our families are going to lose more people. I come from a big family. I don't want to lose any more. As it is, it's bad enough that some years we spend three, we spend money on three funerals. It gets that bad in our family sometimes. Yeah, well, if you're on a farm, you're going to be working pretty hard because you're still going to have to make sure that that food is ready. You're going to have to protect it, make sure it doesn't get out. Don't leave your farm. Yep. Because, see, quarantine is not what you think quarantine is. Quarantine is just stopping everybody from having the contact. But if we don't do it globally together as one unit all over the world at one time, the virus is going to keep on spreading. Yes, some food is going to go rotten. We're going to lose a little bit of food, but that's why the army steps in and gets it and makes sure that it's handled properly, gets to the people with minimal contact to the food, 
God, even if they have to drive up the street with ration trucks, right? Everybody puts a number of people and they must register. It's quite easy to set up a website and have a register for people. Everybody registers how much is in the house. Who's in the house, i.e. human and animal. What human, how many humans, what sex the humans, because certain women may need certain products. And I don't, don't give a shit about transgender at the moment. If you are male transgender or you female transgender, you will need to identify as a male or female during this process so that you can get the necessary products you need. Yes, you declare you're transgender. But no, no fucking fancy shit, please. Basic essentials, that's it. But the government needs to know where everybody is, who everybody is. Are you vulnerable? You, they need to make us all do a questionnaire so we can send them, okay, we're vulnerable, we need this, we need that, we need food, we need to look after. But just because I'm a prepper doesn't mean I don't need food. Because if I deplete my stock and they don't lock down, then I'm fucked. I still have to go out and buy groceries like everybody else. And I just buy that one or two extra, I still buy that one or two extra tins every day, every time I go shopping. And that's how I stock up. I don't rush it. Every shop, I buy a couple of extra tins that I know I don't need, it goes into the food storage and then it gets rotated and eaten. But everybody needs to be fed for 40 days and for 40 nights. I have enough food that if I have to do it, I can live through the crisis. I just have to make sure that my doctor gets me my scripts. Chemists are going to have to turn in delivery services. They're going to have to deliver to everybody if anybody needs a scripts. Chemists are going to have to be thing. Now, this is something really important. If a doctor is sick, they shouldn't be going near patients. If a chemist is sick, coughing, sneezing, anything, even if they say it's hay fever, one at the moment, they should be locked down. Yes, unfortunately, I know a chemist. I saw sneezing the other day, just hay fever. We don't know that. He should have locked down, straight up, should have been locked down. I'm not saying what chemist, because I go to a couple. And get all my aftershaves at one chemist. Let's just say it's that chemist. So that I know I know one of them watches the stream. So your boss should be locked up at the moment because he's sneezing. Shouldn't be working. Shouldn't be working. Any teacher should never go to work when they're sick because these are the things that cause pandemics. We are going to have to reconsider how we operate as a nation when it comes to health and safety. Plans are going to have to be put in place, but we're going to have to learn from this one and make sure that we enact a plan that makes sure that whenever a pandemic or an epidemic is mentioned, that every border around the world should be shut down, males should be quarantined instantly instantly until we know the life of the virus or whatever we're quarantining for male should be quarantined indefinitely until we know the lifespan and we can quarantine a male or if it's already been quarantined for that long then we can finally release it but it should be quarantined during a crisis even an epidemic all males should be quarantined the moment an epidemic is even mentioned because even then it still can turn into a pandemic because some people may have contact. See the six degrees of separation, everybody knows. See, generally when you one person gets it, they infect two. This is why it's moving and doubling so fast. But I guarantee you by January 1st, it's going to be 60% of us that are either contracted it and 20% of us dead. That's the world, 20% of the world population. It's a lot of fucking people. It's going to be worse than the plague if we don't act now. And if we don't get our governments to start acting properly, we're all going to die. I'm not fear-mongering. I'm telling you the truth.
No, don't refuse bailout. Oh, okay, if you're a business, why Why does the business, if we're locking down, why does the business need money? If they're, they're not paying staff, if everybody's locked down, you don't need to give them money. You will need to give them money to help them start up again. And we are going to have to start the world up again. But before we do, we're going to have to disinfect it, the world. We're going to have to clean it and make sure you use healthy ones for the environment. Workplaces are going to have to be disinfected. And I, I couldn't believe what, what um, India did. They're spraying, they're disinfecting the people. They're spraying it all over. They're doing idiot. This is what happens in these things, folks. This is why things get worse. No. Just because they're awake, you're not going outside. No. Oh, she's in trouble today. Pinch me, Devon. Oh, I walked out of the house for 10 minutes to get something out of the truck. Got back in. She got into the grocery bag, ate half the loaf of bread and stole the Devon. Yeah, you took it. And I see it in the hallway already. She's already got the wrapper in the hallway again. Yeah, she's in deep shit, this dog, today. But we can do this, folks. We really can. And as I said, midnight tonight, I will be out laying the plan. I will talk for one, maybe two hours, then I'm going to bed because I have my mother's funeral the next day. But I'm still going to make sure that everybody gets the plan and that it's out there. And please share these videos and please translate these videos if you know how to write another language, to speak another language, please translate this. It really has to be done. Not homeschooled, Tina. What they need to do, they need to use either Uber Conference, Zoom, or a program or web page like those. And teach like the school of the air in Australia. Go and type it into YouTube. Um, YouTube. Type school of the air into Google. Have a look at what school in the air does. These kids go on to college and university. This is, and my school, my TAFE is already doing it. When I do attend classes next week, I'm going to see my teacher if I can attend one of her other classes, and I'm going to see if I can sit in my other classes so I can actually see what they're up to because they learn similar things. And um, so I may be able to um, get access to the software and stuff like that. I know my um, sound teachers organising temporary licences. And I'm talking now, I'm going to talk to software companies. Okay, those software companies out there like Adobe and all like um, the one that does um, the like sound stuff that you are teaching and getting teachers to teach in school for a reason because you want your software done. You should make licenses available to every student for free during this crisis. Especially Adobe because a lot of people need your stuff in class. It's, they're paid for by the schools, but at the moment, this is a crisis. You need to give everybody access that needs access so they can graduate. Everybody's going to have to make a sacrifice. Everybody. Businesses, everybody. We're going to be shut down for 40 days anyhow. We don't need money through this time. We just need the government to make sure we have food. If they make sure we have 40 days worth of food beforehand, yes, some people are going to abuse it and be idiots. Maybe we should just let them go hungry for a day and then restock them, but make them go hungry for a day. They'll learn how to ration. Trust me, it happened in the Great Depression. Yeah, people splurged, used up their stores and their rations. But the, see, the thing is, the difference with the Depression is they could move around, but we're not going to be able to move around. We must find and isolate the virus. Otherwise, more people are going to die. I don't want a single person to die. That's why I have declared war on the coronavirus. And I really have, folks. I won't be doing anything else until the world has shut down for 40 days and for 40 nights. We need to save our planet, folks. We do not want to actually see the world without people happen for real. And it could, if we don't act now. We have to act 
now. We don't act now, we're dead. So we the people, folks, have to do this. So I'm going to sign off now because I've got a lot of phone calls to make and the store that I'm going to have to spend this 500 bucks just opened. I've been watching it on the screen looking for their opening sign. And um, yeah, so thank you very much everybody for watching. Please be here at midnight tonight for the stream where I outline lay the plan in great detail. And everybody will see that it will work. But this is the reason why we have to do it. The plan will be the next video. And that will be tonight. So thank you very much for watching everybody. And don't forget to subscribe. Now see that little guy down in the bottom clicking that little bell. If you don't click that you will not get notified. Yes, well I will be self-sufficient by, by the time in about a month. I'll be able to eat the food. The food, I calculate, will take me 28 days to grow. And won't go to seed. I made my mistake learning about these vegetables last year. Uh, no, year before last, before I had the heart attack. Uh, where I was. Um, yeah, learnt my lesson about broccoli. Uh, never plant broccoli in the summer. It goes straight to seed. You don't get any broccoli. You've got to, it's a winter vegetable, by the way. Learn what your winter, winter vegetables are. Yes, the seeds have run out because smart people actually went out and bought seeds. Too late now. You won't get seeds, trust me. You will not get seeds anyway. This is why the government has to feed us. See, I'm in it for the long haul. I know that I can get through six months. I most probably can get through the whole year because I've got, a, I've got summer seeds as well. See, I stored my seeds years ago. I stored them years ago. And they've got a shelf life and they will last. Trust me, you still can plant seeds. You might, your seedlings might not all come up. There may be some that die, but most of them still live on even after a couple of years in storage. If they're stored in the right temperature, they'll go on for many, many years. That's why we've got a seed bank up in the Arctic. And if we don't do it though, folks, we're all in trouble. So tonight at midnight, please come onto the stream and don't be afraid to comment. Your opinions, everything will be shared on the screen. And you all will be able to show what you think about the plan. So the governments can see that the people are willing to do it. Even if we only reach 20 people, the fact that they see 20 people that are on a one stream and no one says, no, we don't want to do it. If they see 20 people in one stream saying it, it's going to have to make them realise that everybody is going to be willing to do it because it's not hard to do. The time period's not hard. So those of you out there, please be there for the stream tonight. And as I said, don't forget to subscribe. And go to the Cannabis Protester website, um, web, the Cannabis Protester YouTube channel. Subscribe to that one too. Especially if you believe in cannabis legalisation. Because... It's not really legal, even in America, it's not really legal. My aim is to make cannabis federally legal in every country. And it should be, especially in times like this. You don't want somebody making your medicine um, that you don't know. I don't even want a medical company making my medicine because they can put anything into it. We should have the right to make our own. It's dead easy. You just bloody get your bud and throw it in. I've told you, I've watched hundreds of fucking videos on it. But when it is legal, I will make my own so that I don't have to worry about them using oils or body doing something to the genetics of the drug because I know it works so yeah that's what I that's what I do as well I, at the moment all my bids sort of turned over the cannabis protest but when this really took hold and I realized that we need to do this I started sitting down and doing the math and yes math is involved so kids if you don't know about math you're going to need it in life so learn it and learn it good so if we don't do this, folks, we're dead. 
dead, 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 dead. This is not a fear monger. This is the hardcore reality truth. Don't listen to the propaganda assholes because the government feeds all the news and all the fake news because trust me, we are not the fake news. We are the people. The fake news are those guys. They're the ones that get fed the propaganda and they put it out. But at the moment, I need their help too. See, some of them know that this needs to be done. And it needs to be done. But see, they do what the government tells them. I don't. I do what I know is right. And it's right to do this, folks. It's right for me to stand up and get this plan out there because this plan will work. It worked for God. He cleansed the earth in 40 days and 40 nights. And if God can do it, we can do it. We can stop the virus. All we're trying to do is find it. And we will be able to find every case. Because if any cases pop up after 40 days, they're planting it. That's when you know it's Agenda 21. Because 40 days is long enough to identify the virus in any household. And providing everybody is locked down for that 40 days and 40 nights, we will be able to find and isolate the virus and get these people into treatment. We will be able to isolate the others until they're healthy. Unfortunately, if you get the coronavirus during the lockdown, yes, you will be locked down for a bit longer. This is the purpose of the lockdown, to find it, to make sure you get medical care. Because if you don't know you've got it yet, you need to know you have. And you need to know so that you don't start spreading it. If you are quarantined in a house, you still need to keep social distance from each other. You need to each have a chair. You need each have an area. Yes, you may have to stay in your rooms to stop the infection. Once, once it's identified in your homes, yeah, quarantine yourselves from each other because you want to protect yourself from each other. The healthiest person does the cooking. Or you do your own cooking if you're able to. We have to find and stop this virus, folks, and this is the only way. Tune in tonight at midnight tonight. And it's not an April Fool's joke, folks. This is fucking real. This is very fucking real. All right, folks, I'm going to go. As I said, I've got to go and make this phone call and spend 500 bucks. And I know these are still available because no one wants to spend 500 fucking dollars. But... Yeah, this is sort of extreme, extreme shit. But I don't care what I look like. When I go to the doctors, I'm going to be wearing it. And I'm going to have to put it on to drive. I'm going to drive there. I, well, I won't have the head on, but I'll put it on. And I'm going to drive there like that because I can't turn around and risk myself because I have to go to my doctor because I can't contact her. And I still have to go and get some stuff. So, yeah, if the government's made sure we had food or stocked the supermarkets up enough so we could get that food, we wouldn't have a problem. We could all stock up and then we could just say, okay, that's it. Don't worry about the governments. Let's just do this ourselves. And I will tell you to do it. Because if you don't, you're going to die, folks. Or you're going to be one of the infected. And if you're infected, you could infect. We don't know how long that virus you're, you're going to be infectious for. They still don't know that. This is why they're getting ready for the second wave. This is why doctors are screaming for help. This is the help the doctors need. Let's not, not flatten the curve. Let's stop the fucking thing out. Let's put our boots down on the bastard and crush it. We are now the jackboots against the virus. And if we don't fucking act, everybody is going to die, especially if it mutates. It's already mutated once. That's what SARS, this is what, this is SARS. As I said, this is the SARS virus. 
that turns into the coronavirus, that then turns into ARDS. And the ARDS is what kills you. Pneumonia. Water on the lungs. You're dead. Acute respiratory distress syndrome. But it's caused by this virus. And those of you that think this is all bullshit, I hope that you don't have to do what I've got to do tomorrow, bury my mother. I pray to God that you don't have to do that because it hurts. So midnight tonight, I'll catch you all later. Thank you very much. And if you're one of the politicians out there, get your fucking act together. All right, guys and gals, I will catch you later. Thank you. And God bless. And this stream... Sorry. Sorry. This stream was proudly brought to you by What Is ZS. And ZS also apologises that it will not be released until after the coronavirus has ended. Because we can't afford the risk of getting sick and we can't afford the risk of getting you sick because we don't know who's got the virus yet and if we don't find it folks yeah could be bad as I said by 1st of July it'll already be greater than plague the plague so we have to start doing it this is not a media event this is not a share folks this is real and then you've only got to review videos and you will see that I speak out against false flags. This is not a false flag, folks. I'm already, my family's already a victim of it. Please don't let your family be a victim of it. I'll see you all later. Thank you very much. ZS Plastics out. Anthony James Avery out. And Mr. Morrison, I'm serious about taking you to the Hague if I see another Australian die. I will never stop until I see you stand before the Hague for crimes against humanity. Goodbye, everybody. And I hope that's not a permanent goodbye. <laughs>